Hi, Chem 250 Tours. Um, Grace and I are going to show you today the azo dye reaction. And um, here's the reaction that you'll be doing. This will be next week. We're going to start off with toluene sulfonic acid and 3 hydroxy 2 naphthoic acid. And we're going to make the azo dye lithol rubine, a very colorful dye. And we'll do the steps for you in your procedure. The first step that we'll do is I'm going to add sodium nitrite to the sulfonic acid and it's going to convert the NH3 group to a diazonium salt, which will look like this. And this we discussed in our pre-lab lecture. And that is our key salt that we want to make. Um, so this is the step one that we'll show you. Once this is generated, we keep this at zero degrees to keep this from not to decompose into nitrogen gas. We then will add it to naphthoic acid, and it should undergo an electrophilic aromatic substitution, orthopara director, so it should land right here. Um, and it's also potentially could land here and here, every other one, but mainly it's gonna land right here. And that will form our dye. And that'll be the reaction that we'll show you. Um, first step, the sodium nitride we'll show you next. Here we've prepared by weighing out 0.1 millimole each of 3-hydroxy-2-naphthoic acid and of our sulfonic acid. I also have 80 milligrams in excess of our sodium nitrate. Yeah. All right, here we are with step one, and we're in a 10 mil round one flask. We have a, a stir bar in there. We're going to add two mils of water. We're now going to prepare our diazonium salt. And so I have our water, and I have about 20 drops of sulfuric acid. What's the concentration of that sulfuric acid? I believe it's 10 percent. And this is um, not essential, it has to be the exact stoichiometry. It's more of a catalyst in this reaction. Start the stirring. Now we're going to be adding our sulfonic acid. It's pretty weighed out to be one millimole. We have this. That goes. This may not dissolve initially. It's often a problem with these aromatic compounds. I will stir it for a little bit to see if it goes into solution. If it doesn't go into solution, we're still okay. It'll still react. I may actually try and put this out a little bit earlier. There we go. All right, now ready to add the sodium nitrite solution. It's dissolved in one mil of water. And this is our magic reagent that will get the diazonium going. So add this. Generally, it's good to add reagents drop wise just in case the reaction is exothermic. There's some temperature control with that. So I add this where it's zero degrees still. And here we may or may not see a color change. Sometimes the diazonium itself may have a little color to it, but not necessarily so. And this will probably take about 10 to 15 minutes to react. So we'll let this react for another 10 minutes, and then we're going to now prepare the activated aromatic that this solution will be, at, be added to that once um, it's done for me. OK, 
Okay, next step we're going to get the activated aromatic in there. Since it's a um, naphthalic acid, it needs to be dissolved in, in base or it will be dissolved in some hydroxide will help it go into solution. So carefully added, this is a 25 ml round bottom. There is a spin bed in there for stirring. Add the sodium hydroxide. Again, this may or may not go into solution. If it goes into solution, all the better. It means we'll have a more efficient reaction. That looks pretty good, actually. While it's getting dissolved. Now, with our reaction, we're going to also cool this down like we did the diazonium salt because we want to start this reaction at ice cold temperatures and keep the diazonium safe and cold. this cool down for a bit and then in about five minutes or so I think we'll be ready to have the diazonium salt and there'll be some coupling going. You guys want to just cool a little bit? Okay. Five minutes have passed and we're ready to add our diazonium salt to that activated aromatic. And here's where we're watching for a color change. Adding it dropwise. Oh, yes. yes. This is exactly as dramatic as we were hoping. <laughs> yes. but something tells me it's working. Looks like we're done here. It's a beautiful color. This turned out better than sort of thought of it. Really successful reaction. It's great. So now we're going to, we have some nice solid here. We, we want to isolate the solids so again. Do vacuum filtration for this carefully here. See if it comes out. Sluggish solution sometimes happens, so it may take about five or five to fifteen minutes to have the water drain on through. But you can see we're having a beautiful deep red color out of all of this. Here we go. We're done with our filtration. You can see we have a beautiful product. This is some of the solid that we isolated. It is a great, great color. We actually, made it. So it'll probably be a pretty good deal. We'd have to wait for this to dry at least overnight. It's pretty moist with water. But it's, it's, it turned out to be a incredible color. Very marvelous dye and very good yield. There we go. That is your product right there. All right, this is our last test. We're going to see if this dye is pH sensitive. I add a little bit of water to it to make it a little bit more of a solution. And this here is a sodium hydroxide solution. 
and we're going to drop the dye into the sodium hydroxide to see if there's any color change to it. And it looks like it held the same color, and it could be that this initial solution is also already basic at this point because the, the naphtha was in basic solution. But let's see what happens if we add some of this to, this is acid, this is a sulfuric acid solution, so it should be highly acidic. Ah, if anything, it looks like the color is not as intense. It looks like it may have diminished a little bit, and it could be as we're protonating all the OH groups, the phenoxide group and the acid group, it may be losing its color a little bit. We sort of see the intensity difference. This is strong base here, and everything is fully deprotonated and ionic, and this is protonated, and it looks like when it's in base, it has a little bit more intensity, and this actually would be, be expected in this case.